Okay. <laughs> so I can't get to anybody's questions the, the way that I want to anymore. Um, but let me try to do it this way. Um, so in a stream a couple months ago, everybody's always asking about vitamin C. And I said that it's, it's a really dumb idea. Um, and the reason why I said it's a really dumb idea, uh, I wanted to share today, uh, supplementation with vitamin C, 1000 milligrams, 20,000 milligrams of vitamin C every day. That's a really, uh, silly idea. And, and, and sorry, like we're not silly for buying into this. It's, it's what we're taught. It's what we're shown is a good idea. And so we think that going out and buying these products and, and engaging in this nonsense, capitalistic, uh, agriculture driven, economy driven, uh, idea that this is a good thing for our body. We're only fed half the story. See, the thing about when you do research is you, is you, is you gotta take us, if you're given a question, you gotta take a step back and you, so the first thing you gotta do is identify a scope. You gotta see like, what are all of the factors that are contributing to this issue? Uh, how far back do I have to go to be able to see the whole picture? And then, and, and then to be able to, to decipher what the actual root cause is. And so you could probably see from a lot of the other videos that we do that that is my primary goal is to first identify the scope of the problem and hone in on what is the most common probable contributing factor and attack that like you wouldn't believe. And so carbohydrate restriction and vegetable oil elimination, culturally appropriate exercise, fasting, sauna or sweat lodge engagement, all these things, culture, right? That's the answer. So the reason why vitamin C supplementation such a stupid idea. Um, they did the study with prison inmates where they restricted their vitamin C intake uh, to be able to identify at which point does scurvy occur, the deficiency of vitamin C, and they found that it was around 10 milligrams a day. 10 milligrams a day is like nothing. These are in prison inmates who are engaging in an omnivorous diet. Uh, and so, which is going to be important for what we're going to talk about later. So, all of these issues uh, of scurvy happen when you're having 10 grams of milli 10 milligrams of vitamin C or less each day. That's like almost nothing. It's not, it's not optimal. They all know that the development of the RDA, the recommended daily allowance of certain vitamins and minerals is only to prevent a deficiency in which, which is not the identifiable optimal intake. What is the optimal intake of vitamin C? Uh, and that is always going to vary. Why? It's because it doesn't matter how much vitamin C that you're eating. What matters is how much sugar that you're eating. <laughs> now, before you turn the video off, it does come down to sugar because sugar and vitamin C use the exact same transporter. It's called the GLUT4 transporter. That's what takes the sugar or the vitamin C and gets it inside of the cell. Uh, and sugar will always outcompete vitamin C. And so the problem is, is not that you're not having enough vitamin C. It's because there's too much sugar that's blocking the absorption of vitamin C. Because what happens when you engage in carbohydrate restriction or elimination, that means there's more vitamin C that is going to be available for your body, available for the cells and the tissues that you need. The reason why it's important to understand that the prison inmate study was done to uh, on vitamin C and the amount of vitamin C that your body needs in order to function properly uh, without uh, that is free of scurvy. The reason why it's important to understand that the, that this was done on um, on, a, on an omnivorous population is because when you are engaging in a uh, carnivorous, biologically appropriate, ancestrally consistent diet, this is this is this is going to be different than an omnivorous diet that contains carbohydrates, that contains plant matter, that prevents vitamin C absorption. We're looking at a diet that is free free of carbohydrates that has absolutely no plant material inside of it whatsoever, the amount of vitamin C that is going to be absorbed in that individual is going to be much higher. Has there been any studies done on this? No, there hasn't. So, I mean, we're going to have to put that a little bit on the back burner for now, but that is that is why it's so important to understand, you know, um, in some of these studies, there are confounding factors that um, are preventing us from establishing what is the appropriate value of vitamin C that is optimal for human health in a body that is not engaging in plant material uh, whatsoever, just like our ancestors. The only reason why you need vitamin C, the only reason why you need that little bit of vitamin C is for this to create collagen. 
um, which is super important. To, but yeah, we only need a very little bit. See, we always look to vitamin C as this very powerful antioxidant, and it helps us with sicknesses, and it helps us with this and that. But that's that's you know as true as it is. It's 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 at the same time it's 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 not really all that true. See, because all of the antioxidant capacities and programs and processes of vitamin C can be done by uric acid. Uric acid does everything that vitamin C can, but better. You know why? Because if you have too much vitamin C, say you're having a bunch of sugar and a bunch of vitamin C, the sugar outcompetes the vitamin C, the vitamin C is not being absorbed, that means the vitamin C will, will be broken down. It will eventually oxidize inside of your body, it'll be broken down. What does vitamin C break down into? It breaks down into oxalates. Oxalates are needles. They're these, they're these sharp, pointy little needles and, uh, and, and that will uh, end up in your kidneys and allow for the formation of kidney stones, calcium oxalate stones, they'll, uh, they'll accumulate inside of the joints inside of your body. And so you have oxal ox oxalate crystals inside of the joints in your body. You, they'll, uh, oxalates are actually one of the most important prospects in identifying what causes breast cancer to go from a benign tumor to a cancerous malignant tumor. What causes or what induces breast cancer in certain tissues and it's oxalates and so oxalates are very bad it's a it's a it's a uh, they're often utilized by plants to protect the plant from anybody from eating it like spinach is really high in oxalates we think it's a good thing because it has vitamins and minerals but it also has a lot of oxalates and those oxalates are going to cause so much problems in your body it's beyond the scope of this video to be able to share with you all of those uh but um uh, all of the extra vitamin C that you eat is turned into oxalates or it's turned into the pro-oxidative um, hydrogen peroxide, uh, which causes more oxidative stress. And it is oxidative stress that is at the root of every chronic disease and the aging process that we know is oxidative stress drives inflammation. Inflammation is what drives every chronic disease, degenerative disease, cancer, the pathology of diabetes and the aging process itself, accelerated aging. Uh, so it's like, do we think that it's a good idea then to have a bunch of sugar with our vitamin C, prevent the vitamin C from being able to be absorbed because the sugar will always outcompete. Um, and so the, uh, to allow the vitamin C to stick around your body long enough so that it's oxidized, it turns into oxalates, it turns into hydrogen peroxide, it causes all this damage, uh, maybe linked uh, uh, heavily to the, in the pathology of the uh, breast cancer itself. And, um, and then the hydrogen peroxide driving the aging process, driving every chronic disease, driving degenerative diseases. And so it's like, oh, this needs to be. And so we always like vitamin C because it breaks down into hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen peroxide is antiviral. So when we're sick, we have a bunch of vitamin C and that puts a bunch of hydrogen peroxide in our body and that kills the virus. It's not the way that it works. <laughs> Though hydrogen peroxide might help in some viral defense capacity, it is going to be causing a lot more harm than good. Uh, and, and then and again, just echoing from previous videos, um, if we are looking to vitamin C as an antioxidant, that is such an ill-informed uh, idea um, because uric acid is far more successful of an antioxidant than vitamin C because it doesn't turn into oxalate, because it doesn't turn into hydrogen peroxide. Uh, and, and because your body makes its own antioxidants, the antioxidants that your body makes are way more successful than any exogenous antioxidant you could ever take. Uh, the antioxidant enzymes that your liver makes, glutathione, superoxide, dismutase, hemioxygenase 1 and 2, catalase, uh, all of these are the most powerful antioxidants um, that are literally millions of times more reactive oxygen species absorption capacity than anything that you could ever ingest from a supplement or a fruit. So better to support the, your body's ability to produce the antioxidants that it needs. Um, and so if you are supplementing with vitamin C, that vitamin C is turning into hydrogen peroxide, it's turning into oxalates. Well, how do you get rid of a pro-oxidative hydrogen peroxide molecule from your body? Your body needs to make more glutathione. It needs to make more of its own antioxidants to be able to scavenge the all of the vitamin C supplements that are turning into hydrogen peroxide. So the, the, the supplements are only taxing your body's ability to keep itself clean. So 
that's a really important idea to understand. See, according to evolutionary biology, we used to be able to make vitamin C, you know, back when we were in monkey ape days before we started to branch off into these homo species. And so uh, um, we did used to be able to make vitamin C. We were able to synthesize our own vitamin C. But at some point in our evolution, our ability to create this vitamin C, the gene that's that that is responsible for creating vitamin C in our body was selected to be knocked out we don't need this anymore so get rid of it we don't need to be making vitamin c anymore so this gene was specifically selected against in the evolution of our species and so it's been it's because we don't need it anymore it's because what our body uses instead of vitamin c is uric acid uric acid is a breakdown component of purines that we're eating from the protein uh the rich high level protein sources that we're eating the meat from animals is breaks down into their specific amino acids uh the purines break down into uric acid that is what's responsible for the antioxidative capacity inside of our body at the same time in the development of our body that we dropped that we specifically eliminated the gene responsible for creating vitamin c our kidneys changed and one of the things that changed in our kidneys is a gene that's responsible for eliminating uric acid now what happens is our body is designed to keep the uric acid see we're always taught that uric acid is a bad thing that your body does everything that it can to get rid of uric acid is the whole reason why you have kidneys uric acid causes gout uric acid causes this uric acid this uric acid that and that is completely misleading and and just blatantly false because your kidneys are designed to keep they filter your uh, they filter and and are programmed to keep over 90% of the uric acid that's in the fluid in your body. It gets rid of small amounts here and there to maintain a very specific homeostatic amount of uric acid that you need in your body, in your blood, all, all times for that anti antioxidant, antioxidative capacity. Uh, so the uric acid is needed. It's needed uh, and so much so needed that our bodies are programmed to keep over 90% of the uric acid flowing inside of our body at any given time, um, according to the way that our kidneys work. Gout only happens in those, gout, a uric acid that causes gout, uh, gout only happens in those people who have low levels of glutathione inside of their body, low level anti endogenous antioxidant production inside of their body. Those are the only people that are going to have gout. Now, what causes you to not be able to produce the amount of antioxidants that you need? Well, supplementing vitamin C for one, because when you supplement vitamin C, it's not being absorbed. It's turning into the pro-oxidative pro pro uh, compound, hydrogen peroxide. Now, all of your body has to focus on using the antioxidant capacity that it's creating to eliminate all of the um, oxidative uh, uh, stress that's caused by over supplementing with vitamin C and also insulin resistance and excessive um, carbohydrate consumption that is going to be causing a massive amount of oxidative stress throughout your body now all of your antioxidants are dis are trying to remove all of the garbage that's happening because we're eating too much sugar we're having too much carbohydrates we're and we're supplementing with too much vitamin C now that's where all of our antioxidants are going they're not able to deal with the uric acid anymore. So now we get gout. Gout only happens in those of us who have low levels of glutathione production um, because of insulin resistance and where the glutathione is removing all of the oxidative stress caused by supplementing with vitamin C. So to recap, vitamin C supplementation is not a good idea. It's not what our bodies are designed to it's not something that our body needs and it's something that our body genetically selected against millions of years ago because we don't need it anymore uh, it is redundant to uric acid uric acid is by far a more powerful antioxidant than vitamin c and also it doesn't break down into pro-oxidative and pathological oxalates um, and so when somebody tells you that supplementing with 20,000 
milligrams of vitamin C every day is going to help with your immune system and that they've spent 20 years researching this one molecule, vitamin C, uh, and they're making a TikTok about it and you're sending it to me because you want to know that if, if this is true or not. It's not true. It's not true at all. And this is why. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... <clears throat> sorry, in the summary, within the summary, is that all of the vitamin C that you're eating is not, most of it is not going to be absorbed uh, because we have too much sugar. And so all of the sugar and excessive carbohydrates that we're eating is preventing vitamin C absorption. Uh, so all of that vitamin C is turning into hydrogen peroxide and oxalates, pro-oxidative uh, stress and uh, pathogenic oxalates that are very very heavily linked to the malignant uh, to to the malignancy of breast cancer cells. Uh, so this is all like this is some pretty heavy stuff. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> you know what? I just wanted to spend a couple minutes with you guys. This is one of my favorite ideas: vitamin C supplementation. Um, something that we don't. It's, it's something that we don't need at all. Uh, and and when you look to the protocols, the the cultural technique that uh, when you're looking into what is the most culturally appropriate nutritional protocol to help us live the lives of our ancestors that is free of chronic disease that helped us age well. It is a diet that is free of carbohydrates that is free of plant material whatsoever. And it is a diet that has no vitamin C supplementation in it whatsoever. It's one of the criticisms that we receive when we're touting the benefits of carbohydrate elimination, fiber elimination, plant elimination, is where are you going to get your vitamin C, bro? And we're going to get it from our food because uh, red meat per pound has about 15 milligrams of vitamin C inside of it. And, you know, having two pounds a day, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, we're, we're, we're a whole standard deviation away from the, the pathology of scurvy. So that's fine. Yeah. You know, it's just funny. You you take a, take a simple thing where people are looking at, uh, uh, a condition, an issue with a, with a goal. I, I have, I have no goals. I have no products. I have nothing that I'm trying to sell. I am just doing what I need to do to help us be as happy and as healthy as possible. Not supplementing, not supplementing with vitamin C is one of them. Uh, and if you are supplementing with vitamin C, if you want to be able to absorb the vitamin C that you're paying for, you better be restricting the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope that helps people with this idea that research is fun. And I love sharing it with you guys. You guys have lots of questions about vitamin C. And uh, I hope this helps. <laughs> no, to me, that's... Well, no.